Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be teaching you how to play a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Hidden Leaders. This one's published by BFF Games and it's designed by three different designers, Marcus Mueller, Andreas Mueller, and Raphael Stalker. And it's a two to six player social deduction game, hidden roles also. That's right. And so in this game, we're going to be playing as one of six different hidden leaders who belongs to two different factions, yep. right? Mm -hmm. There are four total factions in the game. And so if you are the hidden leader who belongs to the winning faction, then you win the game. There's a little bit more to it than that. There's some card manipulation. There's a whole board, the tracker, but uh, we will go over all of that in one second. And so before we begin, we do want to mention that this is a prototype copy of the game. So things are subject to change. Mm -hmm. I believe the artwork is final. That is correct, yes. But uh, some of the actual cards are going to be switched out in the final copy. Yeah, right? I, they've, since we've gotten the prototype, they've tinkered with it a little bit mm -hmm. more just to kind of balance things out. So that will be in the final production. That's right. And if you're interested in learning more about the campaign, we'll include a link to the Kickstarter down below. Now, if you can do us a big favor and turn on your Klingon subtitles, just in case we need to make any corrections we can add them there we'll also add those to the description if we find out and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future please consider subscribing and with that we're going to get started so please direct your attention to the center of the table we are all set up here for a two-player game of mm -hmm. hidden leaders just to kind of give you the lay of the land in the middle of the board here is the main tracker which we are going to be manipulating in order to see which of the four factions wins the game right we have the water people who are the blue faction the undead which is this darker grayish faction the Empire, which is red, and the yep. Tribes, which are green. Exactly. And so the theme of this game is that the Emperor has died. He's passed right? away, and now there are four factions that are vying for control of his power. Mm -hmm. And each player plays as a leader who belongs to two of those factions. Exactly. We're not quite sure which way we're going to go, mm -hmm. right, until the very end. And so whichever player has the leader who belongs to that faction, who also has the most number of heroes of that faction, is the winner. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the game, the winning faction is dependent on these two markers and where their placement is on this track. The first thing you check is whether these two markers are both in this area, which is the dark area. If so, then the dark gray faction, which is called the undead, is the winner. Mm -hmm. If not, then you would check to see how far away the two markers are from each other. If they are either only one space away or next to each other on the same spot, then the blue water people win. And if neither of those are true, then you see which marker is further ahead. If the red marker is at least two spaces further ahead than the green marker, then the red empire faction wins. And vice versa. If the green tribe marker is at least two spaces further ahead than the red marker, then the green tribes win. And so we are going to be manipulating these markers throughout the game. And so during setup, each player is going to be handed one of these six hidden leaders. And at the very top of the card, the color combination here shows you which of the two factions they belong to. Mm -hmm. And so this is done secretly because these cards are not going to be revealed until the very end of the game. Yes. Okay. All right. So we have our secret hidden leaders. Mm -hmm. And then each player is going to start with a hand of five cards. Of these five cards, one of them you're going to discard into the wilderness because all cards typically throughout the game are discarded into this wilderness area. So I'm going to go ahead and discard that one. Okay. And then you're going to choose one card to be played face down in front of you as your starting hero. And so this is going to be important for at the very end of the game when we determine how many heroes people have right. in front of them that belong to the winning faction, right? Exactly. I'm going to place this in front of me, just like that. Okay. And then, starting with the first player, players are going to be taking turns essentially playing a card from their hand and resolving the effect. Yep. And so a majority of the time, cards look something like this. So if I were to play this blue Leary Lizard, who belongs to the blue water faction, it says here that I can move the red marker down one space or the green marker down two spaces. I would make this decision based off of who I am right. as, a, as a hidden leader, right? After I resolve its effect, then this is going to go face up amongst my heroes. And so the number of face-up heroes is the end game trigger. In a two-player game, as soon as somebody has eight face-up heroes in front of them, then the game ends, right. just so you know. Sometimes cards will allow you to take more face-down heroes, such as this uh, Joyless Chief, who says I can move the green marker down by one and draw two cards from the harbor. Put one of them into my party face down and one into the wilderness. So this is another way for me to acquire more heroes that mm -hmm. are not necessarily the face-up ones. Another example of a card is the... A uh, whiskered Viking who uh, lets me move the, the red marker up two spaces if I have one or more face up card in my party who belongs to the undead faction. So, so because don't. I don't, 
then, then I don't actually get to move that up. But that's one example of cards that kind of combo off each other. Yeah, a lot of these cards will just manipulate what's happening on the track or also take things out of uh, circulation. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what you're trying to do in this game. And so the gameplay dynamic is all gonna be dependent on the card effects that are played during the game. Right. And mm -hmm. so the card effects are highly variable, but they all follow a certain kind of characteristic of the faction that they belong to. Exa yep, exactly. And so the, uh, the red and green factions typically will increase and decrease the markers depending on which faction you're playing. Mm -hmm. The blue faction will, will typically try to balance the markers out because that's what the water faction wants to do in the end. Yep. And so the dark gray faction, which represents the undead, does a lot of interesting uh, kind of abilities that let you kill other people's heroes, which then go into the graveyard. Mm -hmm. and some cards allow you to resurrect cards from the graveyard okay. back into your hand. Yeah, and that could be one of the timers of the game. Remember, if, if there's heroes face up, you might want to play a gray card to prolong the game so that you can still manipulate the board to your favor. And so abilities that allow you to take from the graveyard also include taking this card, which is the deceased emperor, mm -hmm. the deceased emperor. Out of the graveyard, starts yeah. Starts the game in oh. the graveyard. And so if you are able to resurrect this um, card into your hand and play it, this counts as a wild for any of the four factions. Yes. So that's just one extra hero that you're going to have at the end of the game, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, if I don't want to play a card in front of me to take whatever effect mm -hmm. on the board, I can instead choose to discard up to three cards from my hand into the wilderness. Because after that, you're going to draw back up to a hand of four cards mm -hmm. using any combination of the face-up cards in the tavern and the uh, face-down cards here in the harbor. And so since I played my Leary Lizard, then I'm just going to uh, draw up a hand and maybe take this Raven Whisperer and the Wardy Witch. And now that I have four cards, then I end my turn by discarding one card into the wilderness so that I end my turn with only three cards in my hand. Mm -hmm. So maybe I discard this one. And so this is a good way for you to kind of move the cards around while um, not allowing your opponents to card count. Or to really know what exactly you're trying to do. Exactly. And then we refill the tavern with face up cards, just like that. Yep. And so at the very end of the game, the table might look a little something like this in a two-player game, because mm -hmm. as you can see, I believe I have eight face-up heroes here, you do. which is the game-ending trigger in a two-player game. And so the very first thing that we're going to do is we have to determine which of the four factions is a winner by consulting this board. First things first, both markers are not in the dark area here, so the undead do not win. Mm -hmm. They're also more than one space um, away from each other, so that also disqualifies the water people. Yep. And so it looks like the red marker is um, more is two spaces or more further ahead than the green uh, tribe. So the red empire is a winner. Yep. So now we reveal our hidden leaders. Okay. Aha! And it looks like both of us belong to the red faction. So it's going to come down to how many of the red faction heroes we have in front of us. So then we count both the face up as well as the face down heroes. Okay. And I have three. To my two. So then I am the winner. Monique would be victorious. I, yeah, I would be victorious in this situation because I have more of the um, red heroes. Yep. And so that is pretty much how Hidden Leaders works. And so as you can see, a majority of the gameplay is going to be based upon uh, the card effects played around the table, as well as the you know the mind games that we play with each other, mm -hmm. because uh, nobody knows who each other's Hidden Leader is. Right. Uh, you can kind of try to guess based off of how people behave but it's always kind of tough because your leader belongs to two different factions, right? Exactly, yeah. And in a full complement with six players, you know that all leaders are out and in play, so you are technically teaming up with other people. Sometimes it comes down to just playing certain cards just because you know that that faction is going to win, so that way you're at least eligible to beat out your opponents. Mm -hmm. Especially, like I said, in a full complement game when there's six people in, you know that one of the factions is going to win, so you want to be at least part of one of the two from your specific leader. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna be keeping an eye on that board, definitely, and yes. making sure that the markers go in your favor, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And so that is Hidden Leaders. Please let us know if you have any questions about how to play the game or anything about the campaign. Feel free to leave us those questions down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. This game should currently be live on Kickstarter, yep. so we'll include a link to their campaign down below. Thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you, Thanks. bye. bye.